Okay, so welcome everyone to IIT Bombay Virtual Competitive Algebra Seminar. Uh, today uh, we have with us Kazuma Shimomoto uh, from Nihon University and he has kindly agreed to educate us about perfectoid spaces in two lectures. Uh, so I, I invite him to present his seminar now. Okay, uh, thank you so much for giving invitation uh, to this uh, in a seminar uh, with uh, are people just uh, from different countries and different time. And uh, so today, uh, uh, today I'm, I'm going to talk about perfect to the spaces and uh, this is a part one. And uh, what I want to uh, talk ab about in this seminar is to first start with some historical aspects of perfect to the spaces. Uh, because uh, without talking about the historical background, I think it's uh, kind of harder to understand, you know, if, if I start with definition and properties and the proposition and such and such things, I think it's uh, maybe uh, not quite easy. And uh, I always wonder, you know, which way is best for the people who really want to learn perfect to the spaces. So let me start with historical aspects and then just move on to are the beginning of the perfect the spaces, basically perfect the rings, and some related results and the known results, uh, including uh, classical results and the more recent results. And uh, finally, I'm going to make a problem list for uh, young people, uh, because I think it's a good idea to learn new things. It's find out good problems. And also, I want to emphasize to understand those problems, uh, you don't have to uh, really have a big knowledge of a perfect order spaces because uh, those problems more or less are written in standard competitive algebra. Okay, so the beginning of, of the whole story, uh, the perfect toys is uh, Galois correspondence, which is uh, from number theory context. And actually in the geometry and algebra, uh, it is often necessary to derive certain properties in characteristic zero or mixed characteristic from the corresponding property in positive characteristic. And uh, one such real realization is the following results. So this is called Galois correspondence. And uh, this is somehow classical results back to uh, maybe 1978 or nine, uh, nearly 40 years ago. The statement is as follows. So you take just any uh, prime number, P, and consider uh, the four different fields. And these fields, uh, the first one, okay, so let me start with the first one, K. So this is a QP. So QP is uh, the field of periodic integers. So it's uh, so basically periodic completion uh, of the rational numbers with respect to periodic norm. Then this uh, field, and we are drawing uh, all the p power roots of p. So you simply just take uh, you know finite extension by adjoining uh, p power roots of p, but eventually you have to go to infinite extension. So this I I really mean p to the one over p to the infinity means I adjoin all p power roots of p. Then the next one, this L, is this is uh, the periodic completion of uh, K. So this hat means just periodic completion because this infinite extension K is not periodically complete. QP is periodically complete, but this infinite extension is not complete. And the third one, M. So this is uh, the field in characteristic P. So this FP is uh, in a prime field in characteristic P. So this is Z mod uh, PZ. Then uh, you, you consider uh, the field over FP by adjoining T. Then you again adjoin at P power roots of T. So this T is you know, uh, in determinate over F, FP. And this double uh, brace means 
So this is a uh, theory completion. But once, once you uh, consider FP double brace of T, this is a theoretically complete. Then again, you are joining uh, all P power roots of T. So this M is not theoretically complete. So this, the last one, N is theoretic completion of N. So in any case, these are just fields and dimension zero. And this is, these are just Netherian rings, of course. So then, the following uh, statement for, you know, holds. There are topological isomorphisms of absolute Galois groups. So these uh, Galois groups, uh, this K, uh, K bar, L bar, M bar, so these N bars. So these bar, just so you take, you know, algebraic closures. So you take K and algebraic closure K, so you have absolute Galois group. And as you know, these are very huge groups but this theorem says these four topological groups are isomorphic. So this is the beginning of the whole story. And this is known as a consequence from the theory of field of norms by Fontaine and Bantam Berger. Okay. So if you're not familiar with Galois groups, you, you simply, uh, you, you can, I think, understand this statement is as follows. So for example, this K is characteristic zero because this QP is characteristic zero, but M is characteristic P. So these isomorphisms somehow are mysterious in a bridge connecting the things in characteristic zero and the positive characteristic. So that's how you maybe uh, you know, understand this, these isomorphisms. Okay, so Actually, the fields L and N are the examples of perfectoid fields. So you already uh, encountered the examples of perfectoid fields. So the difference K and L, as I said, is just periodically complete or not. And N is theoretically completion. So these are complete uh, fields. And these are examples of perfectoid fields. And in fact, there's no, or let's say, no obvious ring isomorphism between L and N. So in other words, so these isomorphisms do not come from some algebra isomorphisms uh, between L and M or K and N and so on. But nevertheless, uh, one can identify the element T as a sequence of elements. This T is just, is just indeterminate. But this T is somehow a sequence of elements, which I uh, call uh, P flat. So P flat is sequence of elements. These are just compatible sequence of elements in the sense that uh, if you go just uh, from the uh, right to the left, so P to the one over P, if you raise the Pth power, it goes to P. And if you take P to the one over P squared, if you take uh, pth power, then it goes to p to the one over p. So these are compatible sequence, you know, in the sense that uh, if you start with uh, one spot, if you take uh, pth power, then you go to the right. And in fact, uh, this uh, sequence of elements sits in the inverse limit. So this I said, bijection of multiplicative monoids. So at this point, I don't tell you so much details so why we uh, have to uh, care about you know, this kind of thing. So this is only brief story. So I'm going to talk about more details later. So don't worry about it even at this point. If you have no idea, just see it and you can feel it. Okay, so let me tell you, uh, this N is isomorphic to the inverse limit uh, on the right side. And in fact, this uh, bijection is just a multiplicative monoids. So this N and is identified with the inverse limit on the right side as just monoid. So this doesn't say this is an isomorphism as fields. So this is now uh, the spot we have to worry about just multiplicative structure, but not additive structure. So here I said the right hand side is a multiplicative map, but not additive map because this L, what is L? So L is characteristic zero, which means if you take 
uh, the speed power from L to L in the inverse system, this is only multiplicative map, but it's not additive map. In perfect order geometry, so one writes just L flat instead of N and call it the tilt of L. And also we should notice that the tilt of L, which is the same thing as N, is a field of characteristic P. Okay. So on the other hand, there's a canonical way to recover L. Now L is object in characteristic zero from N. This is object in positive characteristic. Now, how do we recover L from N? So first, we know that this N uh, circle, so this N circle is just by definition is a valuation ring of N. So by the way, if we just go back uh, this theorem, actually they have uh, natural valuation rings inside K, L, M, and N respectively. So here, so this is a double uh, bracket this T means it's just, you take just a, a polynomial algebra over FP and then adjoin P power roots of uh, T and then take T at completion. So in other words, this N, so this N in the theorem uh, is a field of fractions of this N circle. So this is a valuation ring. Then, actually, one can uh, describe uh, this L in a very explicit way. So this is isomorphic as rings. So this is an isomorphism of rings. On the right-hand side is a bit vector of N circle, then invert P modulo uh, bracket P flat minus P. So now, uh, well, this is uh, not quite familiar object, but again, uh, don't don't worry about uh, too much just at this point. So I, I just only give you pictures for so where uh, perfect is coming from. And this uh, is a ring of Vita vectors, and this uh, bracket is a type meter mapping, and this is also another type of multiplicative um, map, but not additive map. So I'm going to talk about it just in the following example. So if you already know something about Vita vectors. So maybe you might have seen bit vectors in the context of maybe most of the number theory, or maybe some textbook like Burbaki, but maybe not so much. So here's a, a, a maybe a simple way to understand bit vectors. So bit vectors actually used to construct the complete and ramified discrete valuation ring with perfect residue field, characteristic P. So let V be a such DBR with perfect residue field K. So this K uh, must be a positive characteristic, not characteristic zero. Then uh, such V is isomorphic or is, is constructed as a bit vectors of K and such V exists uniquely. For example, if you take a prime field of characteristic P, then this, the bit vectors of ZP, uh, sorry, uh, the bit vectors of FP is isomorphic to uh, periodic integers. So this is somehow uh, just the place maybe you, you might have seen uh, the bit vectors concretely. But maybe we don't, we don't know so much about bit vectors, vectors beyond in, in that context because, it, you know, this example, so these are all Netherian rings. But however, if we just go back to uh, upstairs, this N circle, so in N circle is the valuation ring of N, but however, this is not uh, quite Netherian ring. So this example below is Netherian ring, but the top uh, in, in this uh, the slide in the top in this N circle is not Netherian valuation ring. Now you already see something uh, not a Netherian. Okay, so here's just a, a brief summary on the history without details. 
So now there are many technical words, but I don't go much in details. So let, let me just give you uh, ideas uh, uh, beginning from the story of Perfect Toys and uh, just recent uh, breakthroughs. Uh, and in short, is the first appro approach to Perfect Toys. So he used the Banach rings. Okay, so what is Banach rings? Now, you know, this is something we are not familiar with. That's okay. This is not algebraic object, but however, it has the advantage that one can construct perfect little spaces as ring spaces. So in any case, we have to worry about something like Banach space or functional analysis. In the second, in the more recent approach, so-called prismatic cohomology, in this approach, uh, they used Bat and Scholze used the delta rings. So as far as I understand, I don't completely understand prismatic cohomology, so this is quite technical. But uh, delta rings, uh, this is somehow uh, the friend of bit vectors, uh, just used to define the so-called perfectoidization. And the prismatic cohomology seems to give deformations among various cohomology theories, etal cohomology, crystalline cohomology. Okay, so this is kind of blah, blah, blah things without so much uh, considering the underlying spaces or variety of schemes. So this is somehow, uh, you know, so somehow nonsense, but I, 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 I want to just clarify this point in maybe in the next lecture, maybe for, uh, for people just who might be more interested in prismatic cohomology. Okay, so going back to classical approach of perfect toys, the most basic tools in perfect toys is almost purity theorem and Andres lemma. Especially the proof of the almost purity theorem uses either addict spaces or prismatic cohomology. So I don't talk about almost purity. So what, what is it? Okay, so if you uh, can prove this almost purity theorem uh, using only commutative algebra, then one can prove the direct sum and conjecture using only standard commutative algebra. So this is somehow my understanding. So if you are interested in homological conjectures, so you have to study maybe the huge machine of perfect spaces, but I think uh, it gets more and more simplified and somehow uh, you don't have to worry about the whole you know, machinery of perfect spaces. So probably the first question is the name of perfectoid. It is actually the combination perfect plus affinoid. But however, I never asked anyone, including Bat or Scholze or anyone else, you know, so where uh, this name was from. I mean, how they came up with this name. But my understanding is perfect plus affinoid. So perfect means it's perfect field or perfect algebra. It's a, a characteristic P object plus affinoid. So what is affinoid? This is also some unknown word, but in any case, I'm going to a little bit talk about uh, affinoid later. And a second question uh, you might ask is why we need perfect toys? So this is maybe the biggest question. So we have to uh, really consider. So here's my somehow explanation to answer this problem. Okay, so let's start with a prime number and uh, let's start with a uh, P-torsion free ring, which is A. P-torsion free means P is a non-zero divisor. So P is non-zero divisor. Then A mod out by P is a ring of characteristic zero, or maybe I should uh, maybe kick out the possibility that A mod P is a zero ring, but I, I don't care about it. It's just, pick up P and P to show free ring. Okay, so this is characteristic P object. But however, there's no obvious way to recover A from A mod P. But there's actually a good case or, you know, very good case where you can do that. You can recover A from A mod P. So if A mod P happens to be a perfect algebra, so that is to say, the problem is map on A mod P is bijective. So this is a definition of a perfect algebra, uh, which is uh, 
generalization of a perfect field in characteristic P. Then there's a ring isomorphism. Now you see again this vector vector. So this A hat means this A hat is a periodic composition of A. Now this is isomorphic to the ring of bit vectors of A mod P. Now here you see bit vectors. Then what does this mean? Actually, this really means uh, there's an equivalence of categories between perfect FP algebras. Of course, perfect algebra always characteristic P objects. Under the category of P torsion free, periodically complete algebras such that A mod P is perfect. So you apply uh, with the vector construction to perfect algebra, you can easily uh, get the object uh, in the second line of this equivalence. So that's P torsion free. That means P is non-zero divisor and periodically complete algebra such that A mod P is perfect. So going uh, backwards again, so for example, this uh, ZP is the bit vectors of uh, FP. So this, in this case, FP is of course perfect field. Then the object you get is ZP. So this is characteristic uh, zero object. So let's call this uh, correspondence just V. The red, uh, yellow, uh, red colored just V. However, it almost never happens that Nathalia rings are perfect. Now, except the perfect fields. So I think we are mostly familiar with uh, Netherian rings. But, you know, unfortunately, this co correspondence, uh, uh, you know, is quite uh, non netherian you know, objects, except perfect fields. Okay, so let's call this V. Okay, so the second is, if A is a perfect ring, then one can establish equivalence of categories. Now here you see perfect A algebras and the category of perfect A flat algebras. Now I'm not going to so much detail. I'm going to explain uh, these uh, things later. So this is called the perfect tilting correspondence. And now let's name it as perf. If we, one believes that characteristic P is easier to understand than mixed characteristic, this is A, uh, which is A in our case, then Perfectoids uh, offer a possibility as a useful method. And the perfectoid rings are quite huge and rarely Netherian. So for people attending the lectures, most interesting question is probably the following. Now, how can we use perfectoids to solve the problems about Netherian rings? Because Netherian rings is a very familiar object. We can uh, do many things about Netherian rings, but what can we do about non-Netherian rings? So this is not quite easy, but we can try. So let's just compare the, uh, the difference between VIT and PERF. So here is just one answer. So typically a perfect ring uh, has a property that it contains all P power roots of P. This is not all, always true, but the typical case is it contains all P power roots of P. Then uh, A mod P is not reduced. But on the other hand, if you A mod P is a perfect ring, the vector vectors is not a perfect ring because this ring mod P is A mod P. But A mod P, uh, by assumption, is uh, this is perfect ring. So perfect implies reduced. So it cannot contain the P power roots of P. So this is a big difference. And there's a way to construct a perfect ring from a Netherian ring. However, there seems to be no canonical way to construct a map from a given Netherian ring to the bit vectors. And uh, at this point, this is a, the, maybe the best answer I can offer. So why uh, we cannot really use bit, but we have to uh, use perf. Of course, the, uh, this correspondence is very classical and uh, you can uh, find it in some textbook like Serre's uh, textbook on local fields or Brubaki. Okay, so far so good. I... Yeah, there is no question yet in the chat. Okay. You continue. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so now let's just uh, uh, go into more details. Actually, there are several variants of perfect rings, and let me try to introduce the one that does not require much knowledge. So here's the definition. So fix a prime number P, so let B, uh, let A be a ring such that A is periodically complete. So for some element pi, such that P is contained in, in the ideal generated by the pth power of pi. We say that the pair uh, A and pi is an integral perfect to the ring. If the frobenism map is subjective, so A mod pi to the P, uh, goes to a mod pi to the p. So this is a characteristic p because p is contained in this ideal. So it makes sense to talk about the Frobenius map. This is a pth power map, such that Frobenius induces an isomorphism. Actually, this uh, Frobenius is not uh, injective just because, for example, uh, so one reason is that because it con it can contain uh, p powers of p, so it's not reduced. So you have to uh, uh, you know, you, you, you have to get some something which is uh, uh, not trivial, uh, which goes to zero under the piece power map. So according to this definition, so what kind of examples? For example, a perfect field of characters P is integral perfectoid. Because one can simply take pi is zero. So I don't kick out the possibility that pi is a uh, zero divisor, even zero. So more generally, a perfect FP algebra is integral perfect to it. So now you know example of which is Netherian. So perfect field is Netherian. This is an integral perfect to the ring. So to get familiar with perfect toys, so it is important to construct many examples. So here is one uh, terminology. So let's say A is semi-perfect if the Frobenius map is subjective. So for example, uh, integral perfect to the ring is a uh, uh, semi-perfect ring. So I think the most basic uh, non-trivial example uh, is, is given by uh, taking periodic completion of this ring, which already showed up in the beginning of uh, this talk. It's uh, just a huge ring, uh, uh, GP, uh, uh, plus, you know, uh, adjoining p powers of p. So this a is uh, one-dimensional, non-Netherian uh, local domain. So let's take a hat to be the periodic completion. So let's take uh, pi to be p to the one over p. Then we know that a hat a mod p is the same as a mod p which is simply uh, the union of uh, FP uh, adjoining uh, P, P to the nth power of X, module X. So this is not a reduced ring. So as, as a ring, a model P is isomorphic to ascending union of these rings. Okay, so this A, uh, Actually, so what is uh, integral perfect? So this A hat is integral perfect, which I didn't, sorry. So I apologize to you. I should have said which is integral perfect. So this A hat is integral perfect ring. So another example is given by taking periodic completion of the infinite cycloatomic extension. So this is all again given by JP, but this time we, we adjoin uh, primitive P to the nth root of one. Then as a ring, this A is uh, the same thing as a union of GP adjoining X to the one over P to the nth a power modulo X to the P to the minus one uh, first power plus uh, blah, blah, blah to the X squared plus X plus uh, one. And this is because uh, we know cycloatomic uh, polynomial. So this is X to the P to the minus one is equal to it decomposes x, um, the, it this factors as x minus one under the uh, this latter polynomial. So, in this, uh, using this uh, expression, one one can calculate uh, uh, you know something you know uh, more concretely. 
So what is pi in this case? So let us put pi to be uh, p, to p to the second, you know, p to the second power of one and minus one. And in this case, uh, this uh, element, this zero to, you know, this element corresponds to the uh, x to the one over p. So indeed, pi is a uniformizer of the variation ring. So this is Netherian variation ring. And uh, actually, you can check this fact by the normal computation. So there's actually norm map from uh, uh, from the uh, from the this variation ring uh, back to the Z, Z, uh, ZP. So you can take the field of fractions, then you can define the norm map. Then you, you can look at the, the ring of integers. The, this norm, uh, the image of pi is p. And also you have to notice that the variation, which I denote by w on this variation ring is given us uh, as follows. So namely the variation of pi uh, is equal to one over p uh, minus one times p times v times pi. So what is v? V is a standard periodic variation on zp. And we also note that this extension degree is uh, p minus one times p. So this is uh, uh, somehow uh, exercise uh, you know, uh, algebra courses in, you know, just field theory or Galois theory and so on. Okay, so we are mostly uh, interested in periodically complete perfect rings. So using previous examples, let's try uh, to get more. So consider uh, these uh, very huge rings. Uh, these are variation rings of rank one and uh, non Netherian rings. So using these rings, let's try to construct them more. First of all, their periodic completions are integral perfect with variation rings. And let's denote uh, one of the, uh, uh, the rings uh, just by V and let's consider the variables. So from X1 through X to the XD. So now I introduce one notation. So this uh, thing, uh, on the left hand side is defined to be periodic completion of the right hand side. So what is this? So this is uh, the extension of polynomial algebra over V, then adjoin uh, all P power roots uh, for each variable X I. So it's quite a huge uh, infinite extension over the polynomial algebra over uh, V. In, in actually finitely many variables from x1 through xd. So this is actually integral perfectoid, which is not a uh, dimension one. And you can extend this uh, construction to infinitely many variables. So many interesting perfectoid rings can be constructed by taking the quotient of the ring of above type. This is just because uh, we know the analogous result in standard commutative algebra. Namely, every commutative ring is a quotient of a polynomial ring in finitely or, uh, sorry, so this should be infinitely many variables. So finitely or infinitely many variables over Z. So sometimes uh, if we want to uh, prove something, you know, for arbitrary rings, so maybe one possible way to uh, just reduce to the polynomial uh, ring case then because every competitive ring is a quotient of uh, the polynomial ring uh, over G module some idea. Okay, so let me give you uh, more concrete results. So people are just interested in Netherian rings, but perfect the rings are highly non-Netherian, unfortunately. So typical techniques used in perfectoids are modeled on positive characteristic techniques. Actually perfectoid, uh, you know, typically uh, work in positive characteristic or mixed characteristic, but it's quite powerful, you know, uh, in mixed characteristic case. So let me just uh, recall the following results by Kuntz. So what Kuntz proved is the following. So let's take Rm, 
necessary and local ring of a positive characteristic P, then we have the following uh, equivalent statements. First statement is R is regular, and the second, the provenance is flat. The third is R is reduced under the natural map, uh, this R to the P. So this is just the image of the provenance map. Uh, and uh, this is subring of R because I assume R is reduced. So this uh, inclusion is flat. The fourth is R is reduced. And if you take the perfect closure, which I'm also explain later, then this natural map from R to the R infinity is flat. And also the final statement, which is maybe not found in a standard textbook. I, I, I guess even Bruce Herzog doesn't mention this, but there's a formulating this statement. And uh, this is quite a new one. This says there exists a perfect R algebra T such that R to the T is faithfully flat. And uh, the reason I give this statement in just a uh, red color is because this is deep connection with perfect toys. Okay. Okay, so Kuntz theorem has a mixed characteristic analog as follows. So now, uh, okay, I, I didn't even talk about the, the definition of mixed characteristic. So let's, let's, let's just recall the mixed characteristic. Okay, let's say that the local domain has a mixed characteristic P if the field of fraction has characteristic zero and the residue field has characteristic P. So for example, uh, R could be a uh, power series ring over ZP. So here's a statement by Bat, Ayenga, and Ma. So they proved if R is a Netherian local domain of a mixed characteristic, then the following conditions are equivalent. The first one, R is regular, the second, there exists an integral perfect of the R algebra such that T is faithfully flat over R. So now this second statement is quite, uh, they look similar to each other. So I believe that this Kuntz uh, theorem in, in, in the form of five, so this, uh, this last one, maybe uh, was, was given in their paper for the first time as far as I know. Okay, so now you already know uh, how to see perfect to the ring through perfect algebras. Also, let me mention another variant of Kuntz theorem in mixed characteristic. This is quite amusing. So due to Gabber and Lurie, and let R be a Netherian local domain of a mixed characteristic with a regular element pi such that uh, P is contained in the idea generated by pi to the P. Then the following uh, equivalent. R is regular, and the second is uh, the map uh, from R mod pi to the R mod pi to the P, that is induced by the Frobenius map on R mod pi to the P is flat. The reason I include this is maybe explained by the following examples. So for instance, this theorem applies uh, only when R is ramified. What is ramified? So typical example of ramified uh, rings is the following. So let's just take our ZP uh, double bracket XY modulo P minus X to the P, Y to the P. Well, I, actually, I don't have to uh, take power, but in this case, let's just take uh, uh, power of X and Y respectively. Actually, you can take uh, any uh, power greater than uh, one. So for example, x squared, y squared, or x cubed, y squared, or something like that. Okay, so let's take pi. It's just a product of x and y. Then we know that the Frobenius map, actually the, the map induced by the Frobenius on, uh, on the second on the ring, so th this is actually, uh, this map is uh, the same thing as, as the map showing up in the gaba luris theorem in the second. So this is flat. Actually, you can check this directory uh, by uh, looking at this map. Because, you know, this is actually the base change of the Frobenius map on the regular ring in two variables. 
so modulo this uh, this ideal x y. So without, of course, uh, using this GABA re the result, you can really prove this. But this result is, uh, I think, is not found in also in standard computative algebra. So this uh, theft statement uh, was proved by Gaber and then mentioned by Luri in his website. I, I, I can uh, tell you the reference of Luri's uh, paper just later, or maybe second talk. Okay, so in but a younger Mars theorem, it is stated that R is regular if we, there is a basic flat integral perfect to the al algebra. So here is maybe one uh, suggestion. Excuse me, uh, okay. there is a question in chat box. Uh, okay, check box. In uh, fact, uh, characteristic complete perfect rings are same as perfectoid rings uh, for relation between Quinn's theorem and Bach's uh, theorem. I see. So characteristic P is. Uh, so perfect ring is the same as perfect toy ring. Yes, uh, in characteristic P, so actually there are uh, several different versions of perfect toy rings. But in this case, uh, yeah, yes, I, I think, uh, so even if you don't have to say complete, so you simply, uh, say perfect rings, the same thing as perfect to the rings. So because in this case, maybe complete means you maybe complete rings with respect to some ideal or some element, but you can just consider in this uh, statement is just perfect to the ring is the same thing as perfect rings in characteristic P. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay. Let me just tell you just uh, uh, more somehow. Okay. Okay, so many just things to talk. <laughs> okay, so here's a research problem. Uh, I think this is uh, maybe interesting. So in the above statement, so what can one say about the singularities on R if a uh, map from R to T splits? Or the equivalent to the R is an R di direct summand of T. Because a faithfully flat is somehow a stronger, but this is weaker. And in fact, there's some work on singularities in mixture characteristics by Ma and Schwede using perfect toys. And uh, I will try to mention uh, my own results, just um, ongoing joint work uh, regarding the above problem, in, maybe in the second part of the lecture. Okay, now uh, actually uh, this research problem is also connected to uh, another problem by Hansen Kedolaya, which is a, a more number theoretic context. They actually introduced the class of topological rings, uh, the so-called superfect rings. I don't know how I pronounce it. maybe superfect rings, maybe somehow French. Um, this is somehow a uh, subring of perfect ring. So this class of rings ensures that the corresponding addict spectrum is Shifi. So you don't have to worry about what the Shifi means. So let me say something about it. Any F split ring, F split means uh, the provenance map splits. This ring is a perfect ring. Okay. The original definition of perfect rings are based on Banach rings, which I already mentioned in the beginning of the talk. However, to make it accessible, uh, I just want to avoid uh, language from Banach uh, algebras. So we give uh, the more algebraic version uh, the, in the following. Now, let's take a uh, topological ring. So we call a state ring if there's an open subring a sub zero and a non-zero divisor T such that the induced top topology on A sub zero is T adic and T becomes a unit. So T is called a pseudo uniformizer and A sub zero is called a ring of definition. So notice that even though A is fixed, the attached data T and A sub zero are not unique. So this is uh, uh, a top 
this is actually not only a ring, this is topological ring. And the topology is somehow, it's not quite a theodic topology on A, it's theodic topology on subring, which is A sub zero. So for instance, uh, one can uh, replace T with any power T, uh, T to the N. So I try to give you more examples. So it can be shown that uh, if you localize uh, A sub zero by adjoining one of a T, then this is equal to A. Somehow this is exercise. And also it is uh, easy to construct more theta rings. So let me give you an example. First, the simplest case is maybe A sub zero is ZP. So let's take T to be T. Then if you invert P, then it's QP. So QP is already theta ring. So the, another example is the following. So let me just simply say, maybe the in, only in the second example. The second example is, let's take uh, power series ring over ZP and then take uh, power series ring over QP. However, in this case, so we cannot introduce any topology that makes a intertater ring such that A sub zero is its ring of definition. So one way to see this is that A cannot be obtained as a localization of A sub zero by inverting a single element. So in any case, uh, uh, if we want to construct a tethering from A sub zero, you only uh, simply I think you simply just invert P uh, to get A, which is uh, in, 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 the, in the below. So this A is A sub zero, and then join one over P. But this ring is much smaller than A. So actually this A is different from the above A. So this is not equal to the same, oh sorry. This is not the same thing as A. So you can just try, uh, Cook up more examples, just just going back to definition. But let me just uh, go on. So this is a definition perfect to the theta ring. This is a topological ring. Okay, so fix a prime number and let's take uh, a a theta ring. Then a is a perfect to the theta ring. If there is a ring of definition a sub zero with a pseudo uniformizer pi such that the following hold. Now again, p is contained in the idea of pi to the p, a sub zero is periodically complete and a sub zero is completely integrally closed. The Frobenius map, a sub zero modulo, the ideal pi to the p is subjective with kernel being equal to pi. So, so let's take a perfect tethering with a sub zero as in the definition then actually A sub zero is a, an integral perfected ring. So there is a connection between perfected theta ring and integral perfected. The reason why we care about these rings is actually this perfected theta ring uh, shows up in, for example, Schultz, uh, the original uh, paper or Kedolaya Liu's uh, monograph on relative periodic Hodge theory. And the above definition does not require a P to be a non-zero divisor. So again, it can be the case that the perfect of the data ring is an FP algebra. So now going back to uh, the, the last question in the audience. So actually in this case, if you uh, take some characteristic P algebra and the perfect of the data ring, then you have to complete. In this case, you have to uh, complete uh, plus integral perfect oil, then that will give you perfect oil data ring. But why we take a perf uh, completion? So this is, uh, I think, you know, the difference. Somehow, uh, integral perfect oil ring and the perfect oil data ring. But this completion is actually uh, is a big thing. It's not quite technical. It's not only technical thing. It's actually very important difference. So let me just skip this, uh, the following, because uh, not so much uh, about the you know, perfect rings. And uh, you can just uh, uh, just read 
uh, if you're interested. So this one, I will uh, to say. Uh, Kazuma, there's a comment from Nakazato. Oh. The kernel uh -huh. being equal to var phi A0 automatically follows the other different conditions. Ah, I see. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Yes, that's right. Uh, let's see. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, because I think uh, this, uh, okay, so I, I want to talk about also complete integral closure later. So this is a very uh, important condition to completely integral close. Okay, thank you so much. Anyway, uh, not so much time left, and there are many things I want to talk about. So let me just, uh, okay, so what, what, what do I do? So let's see because I just prepared too many things. Uh, okay, so let me just uh, uh, skip some of the, the slides and just uh, uh, go to the, uh, the problem list. Okay. Maybe uh, the most important uh, part of the perfect is a tilt. So let me give you the definition. It's uh, very easy. So let me start with a prime number p. So let me assume a mod p is not zero ring. So if you can start with any commutative ring and then take any prime p, but p is not a unit ideal. So then a flat is defined to be the inverse limit of the following uh, inverse system. Now this time, unlike the beginning of my talk, this is really ring homomorphism. So it's a Frobenius map from A mod P to the A mod P. So this is a uh, ring homomorphism. So the resulting object A flat is a commutative ring. And in fact, this is a perfect FP algebra. So we call this a tilt of A, and sometimes uh, people just call this inverse perfection. So most interesting case is when A has a mixed characteristic. And then as I said, a flat is always a perfect FP algebra. So this is a good exercise for learning perfectors. So just only uh, just look at, you know, just look at this definition, then try to just write down, uh, I mean, a flat, and then try to prove that this is a perfect FP algebra. On the other hand, what happens if you go backwards Namely, if you take the, uh, uh, let's see, so this is a direct limit, sorry. So take just A to be any ring. Again, uh, this time we take A path to be the direct limit of the following, the direct system, starting with A mod P. Then this transition map is a Frobenius map, now which I call direct perfection. So the difference of this and this may be explained uh, by the following lemma. So let's assume A to be just reduced FP algebra because uh, uh, if we, A is already FP algebra, but reduced. In this case, what is A path? A path is just ascending union of, uh, of the ring by joining P power roots of all elements of A. So this is a direct uh, perfection. On the other hand, what is the inverse perfection? This, which is this. In this case, A flat is equal to the maximal perfect sub ring of A. So for instance, if we take A to be a polynomial ring of FP, then A perf is just this uh, ring and A flat is only FP. So it somehow crushes, uh, you know, most part of A down to FP because FP is perfect algebra. Okay, uh, actually there's a, a important uh, thing about perfect uh, tilting correspondence. So what is perfect tilting correspondence? Uh, using this inverse perfection, which, which is this, now you can just establish an equivalence of categories of perfect algebras between characteristic zero and the positive characteristic. So this is uh, actually, 
something I won't talk about, but uh, I already mentioned this in the beginning of the talk. So this is uh, uh, the, what actually showed the proof in the, in the paper of perfect data spaces. So I think maybe I can talk about it maybe, uh, you know, maybe in the, in the next lectures or maybe, uh, okay, let me see, because not so much time left. I think, uh, I, okay, so maybe instead of just going too much details, let me just, uh, okay, so uh, give you uh, mo more, I think, uh, standard things. Actually, some in some place is I mentioned complete integrate closed. So I think for people just interested in perfect toys, so always it's a big question how to start with uh, perfect to the spaces, which paper we should be learning, we should pick up. And this is always big, big question. And this is a big challenge even to me. So instead of just talking about like technical details, because more or less you can find these things in some of the spots. But instead I try to somehow make perfect toys to close to standard competitive algebra questions. So let me just go to the, uh, I mean, the last uh, slides. Okay, so let's talk about complete integral closure. So this is, I think, maybe good to start with. So let's just recall complete integral closure. Actually, you can find the definition in Brubaki or Matsumura's textbook. Actually, when I learned this uh, in a complete integral closure in Matsumura's textbook, maybe I, it's given as an exercise or something, then this completely disappeared. And I didn't really get to the point why you know, this was given. So the definition is pretty simple. Let there be a domain with field of fractions, K, and then A is completely integrally closed if X in the field of fractions satisfies the condition R C times X to the N uh, containing A for some non-zero C and for all N. Then X is containing A. So if we satisfy our uh, this uh, relation, which is C, C times X to the N is containing A, this already implies that X is containing A. If this is satisfied, then A is completely integrally closed. So actually one can define the complete integral closure just like integral closure. And it is quite well known that completely integrally closed means integrally closed. Actually, perfect toys really care about this complete integral closure. That's why I decided to pick up this topic. And for Netherian domain, don't care about it. It's completely the same thing. These notions coincide with each other. And here's a theorem by Kruru. Let's take V, a valuation domain with field of fraction K. Then V is completely integral closed in K if and only if V has dimension one. So valuation ring as a, uh, actually, it could have a very huge uh, crew dimension. Typically, we only, most of the time, we only talk about the discrete evaluation ring. This is a dimension bound. But perfected uh, geometry, we care about the valuation ring in a higher crew dimension. I think uh, this result is mentioned in Brubaki or the textbook. But then the question is, what is the complete integral closure V in K? This question I've never seen. But this was already known by Kruru, I think. So let's give a definition. So let's say that V is a microbial if there is a height one prime ideal in V. So height one is the usual meaning of height of the prime ideal. So it's just a, a chain of prime ideas. If it's there's height one prime ideal, then we call microbial. So here's a theorem. Let's take V be a valuation domain with field of fractions. If V is microbial, then the complete integral closure of V in K is actually the localization of V at height one prime ideal. In this case, V localized at P is the valuation domain of dimension one. But however, if V is not microbial, then the complete integral closure is
Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We had lost connection with you for some time. Some time. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't notice it. Uh, yeah, that's what. Uh, so I asked Sunsuke Takagi to contact you. Uh, uh -huh. But in in any case, I think our seminar time is over. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I. Yeah, we can take some questions if you like, and then continue next week. Uh huh. So okay, okay. So because I did, I I couldn't really finish uh, everything in my talk. You know, I just I, I understand uh, it's it's a, it's a demanding topic, and many things uh -huh. are new to mo most of us. So uh, if you permit, uh, we audience may have some questions, and then we continue next Friday. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so. If if people have questions, they can ask. Uh, of course, uh, we we are going to put the slides after the seminar on the website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a request from some audience that they would like to look at uh, the slides before uh, the next week. Yeah, we will put the slides. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. I I will give uh, slides and. Uh, I think uh, my my slides contains more, uh, which I really couldn't finish up. So, uh, yeah, yeah. especially the problem have, list, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's good to have some some more explanations in these slides. Mm -hmm. I remember when Professor uh, Hoxter talked, uh, gave his seminar. He gave two seminars. He had seventy three slides. Of course, he could not finish them, mm -hmm. but he said he purposely made more slides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. In this case, actually, I have to give a series of lectures, you know, not to like <laughs> talk. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah yes. I apologize, to everyone. Just I was not not able to notice. Uh, just I got to disconnect the plus. I were, was very sloppy and I couldn't finish everything. Uh, that's what it's I wonder. Uh, the speaker, the speaker doesn't pay attention whether he has connection or not. Uh, yeah. But yeah. if the audience has any questions, we can take some questions. Mm -hmm. So I had I had a question. You mentioned the uh, analog of Kunz's theorem due to uh, due to Ma and uh, uh, his two other people, but but and Iyengar. Uh, that uh, so so you have a that's that's a you know starting point of characteristic P algebra in some sense Kunz's theorem. Uh, but uh, so then we have other other results in characteristic p commutative algebra for example you take uh, characteristic p excellent local domain and then uh, we have big cohn macaulay algebra if you take mm -hmm. the integral closure in the uh, algebraic closure of the quotient field mm -hmm. so do we have analog of this theorem in mixed characteristic uh, some something came out recently on this. The yeah. big quantum algebra yes, is this. Yes, quantum algebra R plus, right? Yes, sir. Right, right, right. In mixed characteristic, is it uh, done already? Yes, it's already done. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's so R plus things. I think the only uh, I think question in R plus is uh, you know in equal characteristic zero. But of course, we we already know this is. Uh, if dimension at least for in equal characteristic zero, it's it's not coin Macaulay, but the question is, is it still almost coin Macaulay? But I, I don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. okay. So mixed characteristic, Bargab did this, and a mixed character, uh, possible characteristic, just uh, uh, we already know just for a long mm -hmm. time. And a mixed characteristic uh, using some, I don't know, just prismatic cohomology and some High tech things uh, he proved uh, R plus is uh, coin Macaulay, but it came as a really surprise because uh, if, if Mel Hoxter didn't uh, expect this to be true, or so we didn't even uh, make this into conjecture. But he suddenly mm -hmm. proved this. I, I don't know what kind of <laughs> uh, reason he suddenly came up with this. Yeah, but it's no, also. Yeah, but after after listening to your talk, it appears to me that you have a good theorem in characteristic P. Then you there is always a question to mm -hmm. see whether it is true in mixed characteristic. This is a general question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, but uh, I think uh, makes a characteristic case. Uh, uh, Somehow, you know, you know, Ray Heitman proved this uh, dimension three, and uh, even weak sense, uh, he he proved uh, R plus is almost coimacoli in dimension three mixed characteristic, and uh, I think that was the first uh, appearance of uh, almost ring theory in commutative algebra. Mm -hmm. Then Paul Roberts noticed uh, the connect connection, uh, you know, what Faltings did uh, something like twenty years ago, and. Uh, Ray Heitman did in the direct sum and the conjecture in dimension three, uh, but but I guess you know I, of course you know I uh, followed my you know, you know because my advice is Paul Roberts and I uh, took his advice you know this was the right way to maybe step forward you know the full settlement of the direct sum and the conjecture or R plus thing but even Roberts didn't mention say anything about uh, possibility. Almost going Macaulay's of R plus in higher dimension, but then this suddenly showed up, and uh, of course I couldn't understand his proof. So he, he, here's another challenge. I mean, maybe does someone be able to give a proof in R plus uh, in mixed characteristic coin Macaulay just a just a less elementary method, you know? Right, right. I mean, yeah. the, the theorem makes perfect sense if if you didn't don't know anything about perfectoid rings. Mm. Yeah. At least, like uh, commutative algebra, standard commutative algebra, maybe perfect toy, maybe prismatic cohomology. But uh, at least, uh, I want to go lower level, like perfect toy, I mean, classical sense, then that's really nice. So that's a challenge to me or uh, someone else. <laughs> but other, other thing uh, I, I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. uh, that the definition of complete integral closure. Uh huh. Uh, is is very similar to tight closure okay i mean the the tight closure definition for ideals if you say an ideal is tightly closed uh -huh. is exactly the same definition of complete integral closure you replace the exponent by mm -hmm. r's powers of p mm -hmm. and uh, you you get the definition of tightly closed ideal from complete integrally closed domain uh, i don't know much about uh, connection i mean of course they look similar but uh, I never thought of I mean, that question. Is, mm -hmm. C, C, X, N belongs yes, to yes, A yeah. and X belongs to A. Mm -hmm. So uh, you go to the level of uh, tightly closed ideal, you get yes, exactly yes, yes. the same uh -huh. ideal. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Quite similar. Right. But I, I think, you know, also I wanted to emphasize uh, difference integral closure, a complete integral closure. The reason why complete integral closure is much better uh, thing than integral closure in perfect toys. Because if you look at the definition of complete integral closure, it's just a multiple, it only mentions only multiplicative structure, you know, because C times X to the N. So this is only involving just a multiplicative structure of ring, but not additive structure. Because mm -hmm. also another good thing about perfect toys is if you consider a ring, just forget about addition, just only consider, just only care about the multiplicative structure, then uh, you can say something nice uh, about rings uh, characteristic, mixed characteristic. The, you know, in the beginning of the talk, I just a little bit mentioned the multiplicative uh, in isomorphism uh, between two fields, right? Because they mm -hmm. have different characteristics. Of course, it's impossible they are isomorphic as rings, but be because we have to both care about addition and the mul multiplication. But we have to completely throw away addition, but only care about the multi multiplicative structure. Then after that, we recover somehow additive structure. This is uh, another way of viewing uh, you know, perfect uh, the objects. And I think this is like the semi-group rings, you know, like people working on semi-group rings, they already somehow familiar with perfect uh, because they only care about the multiplicative structures, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. So yes, yes, that's uh, also another viewpoint. Maybe it's good to know about it for uh, commutative algebraists. Okay. okay. All right. So uh, I don't see any questions. It's a, it's an interesting and challenging topic. So uh, I'll request you to send your slides, and we will put it on the website tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and uh, and we will meet uh, next week at the same time mm -hmm. yeah thank, okay. thank you thank you so much yeah thank you for everyone yeah bye bye